Welcome back to another groovy episode about plumbing joint comparison with your favorite plumber, Roger Wakefield. Today, we've got a far out roundtable discussion, so let's boogie on down and meet our guests at the table. I want to welcome Enrico, Daniel B, and Hawk to the show. Hello, and how are you doing? Thanks, Raj. Appreciate it, man. What's up? Hello there. Introduce yourselves and talk about your favorite joints. Hello there. I am Enrico Suave. Enrico Tight Threads Suave. And I'm all about threaded joints. These babies are super versatile and work well for both metal and plastic pipes. They're easy to install with no fancy tools needed. Just a good old pop wrench, a big pop wrench. <laughs> However, they can be prone to leaks if not sealed properly. So remember to use Teflon tape and pop tool to keep things watertight. And the girls, they love it when I make a good, tight, hard joint so it does not leak. That thing's got to be watertight. You know, it's funny you call yourself tight threads. The girls call you Lucy Goosey. I'm just saying. <laughs> What's up, groovy people? I'm Danny B. Daniel B, the brazen boss. Braze joints are where it's at when you need a strong, leak-free connection. They're great for copper, pipes, and can handle high temperatures and pressures. Just remember, you need a torch and some brazen skills to get these joints rockin'. So make sure you practice or call in a pro if you're not feeling confident, man. Because when it comes to brazen, when it comes to burning, when it comes to the hot ride, you got Daniel B and it's all me. Hey everyone, I'm Hubba Hubba Hawk Starlight and I'm here to talk about hub and spigot joints. They're fantastic for connecting cast iron pipes and they're super durable. You just need to slide the spigot in into the hub and seal it up with some groovy oakum and molten lead. But remember dudes, this method is a bit old school, so you might not see as much of it in modern plumbing. And I think it's because those test new plumbers don't know how to use the torch, the pot, the lead. They don't know what they're doing. And brazen, dude, with hair like this, I don't want to be around a torch like that. I want to be something I can stay away from and be in control of. Oh yeah. Sometimes on large plumbing jobs, you run into some socket weld and butt weld joints that you will need a burning hot welder to help out on. But don't let him smoke all your good joints. Socket weld joints are perfect for connecting metal pipes, like steel or stainless steel. They're strong, reliable, and can handle high pressures. You'll need to weld the pipes together, which means you gotta have some welding skills you know, pop playing skills. But once you get the hang of it, socket weld joints are far out. Socket weld, butt weld, anytime you put it all together and it gets really, really hot and just kind of melts right there together, that's what it's all about. Butt weld joints are used on the large pipe joints for steel or stainless steel that socket weld can't handle. You know, when you just kind of butt it up, get real tight, get in there and get your joint right the way you want it and just take control. I don't need a welder smoking my joints up, so I like to run some groovy old groove pipe for some quick connections instead of the welded pipe. And the good thing about groove pipe, it's got a little play in your joints. <laughs> Do you cool cats have any other favorites? When I don't want threads, I sometimes use a push fit for temporary caps and things, of course. You can use these on many popping materials. I don't like them for permanent installation though, like a one night stand, I mean a one night connection. You're gonna leave it overnight, a push to connect, push it in really, really, really tight. Make sure it does not leak again like we talked about before. This is very critical. So joints like this, the women loves them. I like my torch, so I'll go with some good old solder joints on this one. Copper is one of my favorite pipes to run. Smooth or hard, it don't matter. Whether you braze it, whether you solder it, whatever it is you do, you do what you gotta do. And if you don't wanna make no joints, you wanna go jointless, well, there's ways to do that too. You just need a fallopian tube bender. Go get it out of the truck. We can make a joint, we can make a radius, we can make a curve without ever having to do anything. Still, dude, you talking about a torch. I will knock off the cast iron with no hub joints, and any worm gear clamp anytime. There are CT adapters and temporary caps also within this joint type. 
I love old school, man. It's worked for a million years, and it can work for a million more. You also have the modern PEX popping with a crimp joint and an expanded joint. This plastic pop is used to run water lines. It is great for dealing with cold temperatures and typically won't bust when frozen. And I wish I could find a way to expand all my joints. I like the press joints they came out with. You know the press joints, press it close and really, really tight get in deep and snug and press it, saves the thought of burning any joints up or the house. Now, it does take a special tool just like I have. Well, just like most joints in plumbing. And they have these for a lot of material types and they're even starting to make them for HVAC on refrigeration lines. Not my brazen. Hopefully the man will let me stick with my torch. You will run into some flange joints occasionally when connecting to pumps, tanks, valves, things like that. These are mainly for big popping, but they also make them little bitty for easy change outs and maintenance. And this thing of, man, you get these boys over here, think they know anything about big pop? Go back home. Dude, what are those freaks called that just like to play with fire all the time? <laughs> Shoot, you and your torch, and I think that's all you are. Don't see many of those around the house. You will see a few compression joints and slip joints around your sinks. Compression on the water lines and maybe some angle stops. The slip joints are on the P-traps typically so they can be readjusted and cleaned when needed. Look up under your sink. If your joint's leaking, call me, I'll come up peeking. <laughs> Sometimes it will be a flare joint for those water lines. I prefer stainless braided hoses that replaces the compression joint. This joint is a little different, but I want to count it. Expansion joints, for when you need a little movement in your groovy system, you know, the expansion joints, they make it where you can expand and contract and expand and contract, you know what I'm talking about, right? Expansion joints, a little bit different. It's pretty funny you mentioned expansion joint. Heard from the girls, you need yours to expand just a little bit. <laughs> so how about them good old glue joints? PVC and CPVC glue joints, but each one are a little bit different. There are so many different glues and primers to choose from. Make sure you know what you're putting together, check your labels, and make sure you do your joints the right way. Dude, I love those glue joints. I got cut up under a cabinet one time for about eight hours. Dude, <laughs> best to ever have plumbing. All right, cool cats. We've heard a lot of far out joint types today, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. When it comes to choosing the right joint for your project, it all depends on the pot material, the application, and your skill level. Remember, if you're not sure, it's always a good idea to call a professional plumber to lend a hand, or maybe just a good friend to come help you out with your joint.